we're gonna be making our own aluminum panels with mounted watercolor paper today. Hi friends, I'm Lana and welcome to my studio. We're gonna be working with these aluminum panels tonight and I want to mount some watercolor paper to these panels. I learned this trick actually from Lynn Pratt. I'm going to link to her video above where she taught how to do this. Or you can actually buy these. There's a brand called Raymar that they have these panels. They're already made. I like to paint really large scale, so it was gonna be kind of expensive to do that for me. So I thought I would give this a shot and see how this works. I don't like to stretch paper. I like to have it on a hard panel and we won't get into all the reasons why tonight, but I'm having trouble finding panels that make me happy. So we're gonna try this. These are a Lumacomp panels. They're real thick. I mean, there's, man, I could probably stand on this thing. Um, these are just six by eight. I bought um, three different ones just because I wanted to try them out before I really committed to this system. Lynn recommends using Holbein's gel medium soft body. I am also going to use a brayer that I had to buy for for this specifically. I haven't had one of these since high school. Kilimanjaro paper. This is 300 pound. Lynn recommended using 300 pound paper that the 140 pound that she tried didn't do quite as well. Um, I happen to also have some Fabriano Artistico. This is also 300 pound. This is cold press. Both of these are cold press. First thing we have to do is we have to um, have some peel pour in here. We're going to peel this coating off. There's two sides to it. There is a brushed aluminum side and then the other side is a shiny side. We're going to be using the brushed side because I want this to stick a little bit better. It's kind of satisfying to do that. This is a Hobby Lobby brand brush that I've used for all kinds of stuff. This is what I'm gonna to use to put my gel medium on. This is the Kilimanjaro. Um, we want extra around it because you don't want the gel medium to get on the front. You don't wanna run that risk. I am going to cut this in half because I don't like wasting paper, especially really great paper. Kilimanjaro is beautiful paper, so that's really poorly cut in half, but I'll be able to use that. And as a side note, always wash your hands before you start touching your paper. Buying single sheets of paper is probably a bad idea because you are going to be buying paper that lots of hands have touched. So you want to buy the biggest packages of paper that you can afford. What we're going to do is we're going to just take a little bit of this gel medium, squeeze it out here. I don't think we're going to need a lot for this panel. It's kind of thick. It's thicker than I expected, honestly. Um, as Lynn explains, you only need three thin coats on each piece. So we're going to make this as thin as possible. And I want to make it even. I don't want it to have any thick spots because we want our paper to lay really smoothly. Okay, we're going to set this aside. Then I am going to get out some tracing paper. I just realized I was getting some on my table and I'm getting ready to put that paper face down. I don't want to get any of that gel medium on the front of my paper. That was fancy. I'm being very careful when I touch. This is the front side of my paper. Okay, I'm just going to use the same brush. And it's probably going to take more because it's going to absorb some of this. And again, we're going to make this thin. We want to make sure that it's wider than our panel. So let's see, make sure I'm getting, oh yeah. I just want to make sure I was covering enough there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to let this dry. So I have a couple panels. I have a couple different types of paper and I'm going to do this with both of them. Okay guys, I'm back. And in the meantime, I had a snack. I watched some YouTube. I pet my dog, and I've already done this once. So apparently you shouldn't videotape without a mic. Not one of my finer moments. So we're gonna do this again. That means I'm gonna be even better at it because I've already practiced. Okay, so this panel is like, I'm gonna say 95% dry. This is pretty dry, although I can feel it. I feel the moisture in the paper, but 
I think it's gonna have to happen is it's gonna take days for it to dry and I don't think it needs to take days for it to dry. It's got a little bit of a warp to it but this is nice heavyweight 300 pound paper so I think we're gonna do pretty good here. I'm gonna put a little bit more on. More on? Okay I'm gonna put a little bit more on trying very hard not to get this on the front and I had to break out a trash bag because I ran out of parchment paper. It's not really parchment paper, it's tracing paper. So I'm using this paintbrush kind of just almost scraping it on because it's so thick and I'm wanting a thin coat. I just don't want to leave a big glob on there. Get my hands clean. I talked about that earlier. So you don't ever want to touch your paper with dirty hands because you're going to leave a big fat thumbprint on your paper. And you know what? You can't paint over a big oily thumbprint. And now I am giving this a good coat. This is just, I'm just using what was left over. And I'll make sure to get the corners really good because the other one I did, I couldn't get the corners to stick very well. And now we're gonna take this and we're gonna flip this over and put it in the center. Okay, I have icky hands again. Stop, I'm going to stop. I'm going to clean my hands. What I'm using to clean my hands right now is just glass cleaner, sprayway glass cleaner. Is it good for you? Probably not. So here we are. I'm going to brayer this just from the back to start. Now we're going to flip this over. I can feel the moisture in it. I'm going to use a piece of tracing paper and we're going to start brayering it. And I am brayering it from the center out to the edge. With this small, this is only a 6x8 panel, it's probably not going to matter a whole lot, but if you're doing a big one, you really, really want to make sure you're going from the center out so you're pushing out any bubbles that you might have underneath of there. And I'm pushing on this pretty hard. Get my corners really well. Okay, I'm looking here. This looks pretty good. That corner looks like it's a little bit loose. So let's do this corner just a little bit more. Oh yeah, that looks good. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it face down on a piece of paper towel. Um, Lynn was saying in her video that on hers, that as it dried, she just had it on some parchment paper and she, the moisture really didn't have anywhere to go. So it went into the parchment paper and on her painting that she was using, it actually left some little lines across her painting. And so I didn't, didn't want that to maybe leave some sort of residue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give a place for the moisture to go. I'm gonna put down some paper towel. So I'm just gonna put a couple pieces of paper towel and then I'm going to put a heavy book on the back of this and we're going to let that um, rest overnight. We're going to let it dry and then I will show you tomorrow how that all turned out. After the paper dries you're going to need to cut off the excess paper and I just use an X-Acto knife for this. Because I used 300 pound paper though it was very difficult and I don't think my blade was quite sharp enough so I had to do it quite a few times. So my opinion of these panels is this. I love the weight of them. They are very, very sturdy. Um, the paper has stuck down very, very well. I've not painted on the surface yet, so I'll have to let you know how that goes, but I feel pretty confident that this is gonna stick on here really well. The only concerns that I have is it is very, very thick, so you have to take that into consideration when framing. You might need a thicker rabbit in your frame. Um, it's about 3 16 of an inch thick, so that's pretty thick for a, for a substrate. The other thing that concerns me about the aluminum panels is they have very sharp corners. When I was moving these, I accidentally scratched a piece of watercolor paper. So you wanna be really careful. Probably on the next go around, I might sand the corners first just to take a little bit of that sharp edge off first and then be a little bit more careful with how I handle them. And this feels really professional. It feels obviously more substantial, but just it has a really nice weight to it, and it feels like you're really holding something more valuable than just a piece of paper. Overall, it was really super easy, and it's something that I would definitely try again. It was actually kind of a fun process. I kind of liked it. What hard surface do you like to paint on? I would love to know because this is something I'm struggling with lately, and leave a comment below and let me know. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Thanks, guys, and I would love it if you would subscribe and click that notification bell so you will know when one of my new videos is coming out.